And you know, some folks may look at this channel and say, why doesn't he do anything? All he does is sit there and talk. Okay. Well, hello friends and welcome back to the cabin. Let me tell you that it is bonding time here at the outpost. I've got about $250. Now the title of this video is a nickel and dime solar system. <laughs> because all of these little parts that I'm having to purchase to put all of this together, um, it just seems like it's not going to end. But uh, what I've got here, this is some number six copper. I've got 50 feet of this. So I figured what uh, about six foot for each post down there, and there's four of them, that's 24. I've got two ground rods up here. I figured, you know, eight or 10 foot for each one of those. That's 44, right? And then the cabin there, so maybe I split it up like three more, nine feet, right? But this should take care of like the power panel in there, the inverter in here, um, whatever else needs to be bonded on the inside here. And it should take care of the solar arrays down there. But yeah, this right here, this loop, uh, 50 foot, I think it was like $65 for this right here. So, it's not cheap, folks. Then we've got two 50-foot rolls of number eight. And what this is going to use, I'm going to use this for, is the solar panels down there. When I mount the little screws up inside each panel on each side uh, to bond, what I'm going to use is this right here. So this is a little copper, I don't know what you want to call it, stud. Anyway, it's got a set screw right here. It's got an eyelet and then it's got a hole right here. So this will screw to the panel and then the ground wire will pass through here and be tightened down with the set screw. So I needed 32 of those and I don't know exactly how much they were. Uh, they were more than a dollar a piece. I can tell you that because I had to pay, what was it, $150 there at the power at the electric store. So they might have been $2 a piece. I don't know. Like I said, I needed 32 of them. Anyway, I got that. We've got a bus bar. So if you've never seen one of these before, this is what they look like. Right here is where your number six ground comes in. There's the set screw right there to tighten down on it, as well as, I think there's 14 right here, places where grounds can go in. These are the set screws to tighten those down, and then you would mount it on the wall like this to where your grounds can come down the wall or come up the wall, and of course it would be turned towards you like that right there, and then you could actually screw those in and bond to your each individual ground. So, yeah, the bus bar, that wasn't cheap. We've got seven of these, which this is the clamp that goes around the ground rod. So I had to have seven of those. So we got those right here. We've got two different size staples. This size right here is more common for like electrical wiring, things like that. And then this size right here is more like a fence staple. Uh, for like chicken wire, something that's small, I got this to tack the number six down uh, on the wood. This right here is for inside the hut, you know, because I'll have different wires running in different directions, and I might be able to get two underneath one of these. Anyway, so yeah, right there sets about $250 worth of bonding equipment. Now, uh, the number six, like I said, is to go down to attach the ground rod. The number eight is going to run all the way across connecting each panel as that ground wire passes through here. And so we'll have all of those bonded. Uh, there is no bond that goes from like the panels down there up here because you don't want a, a path like that between the two stations. It's, you're better off if you just bond each point to a ground rod. It's not going to be long. I'll be working. You probably see that coming up in the video where I'll be working on that. It rained big time last night. 
and it's really mucky down there so I didn't figure I would go down today and do anything there but what I may do is go ahead and jump on the inside here pull my ground through the hole down there because that's the only thing left that I need to pull through the hole through the floor before I go ahead and seal that portion right there so I could go ahead and run those in there and fasten them up to the wall that way they're already done and I could seal that hole up in there but uh, yeah I'm gonna be busy bonding uh, power panels and the cabin and this hut right here I've said it many times before I still need to go in there I've got um, I think it's 36 outlets that I'm going to have to get receptacles for and light switches that I need to rig up in there so that I have that portion of it complete the power panel is already in place uh, most of the wires are just coiled up with the exception of a couple of lights in there I went ahead and put a temporary plug on those so I could plug them into my batteries that way I had lights up you know <laughs> up to this point thank goodness for those generators there where I can charge those batteries up every day and I don't have to run up to my sisters anymore and I'm still carrying water which is you know I've gotten used to it it's not that big a deal uh, so we keep the, you know everything watered up here the dogs the animals uh, drinking and so forth and I go over to her house to take a shower but that's going to be next on our bucket list of projects probably is uh, this coming spring is trying to get some sort of rain catchment system in here where I don't have to carry the water anymore now that's only going to supply the need for the shower the washing machine and the dishes yeah that's going to probably be one of the next projects and as well finishing the workshop down there and I'm going to start on the back porch and a ramp coming down on the side of the cabin right there so this is the area that I'm referring to back here this is the back door if you've watched the channel that long or for a long time you remember I had a set of steps here where I would go in and work on the cabin as I was building it and of course now I've got the front porch and the steps up there but I need a deck that comes out here what might be the easiest thing to do set some posts and cantilever over uh, but I need a deck back here big enough to when we open the door now this one swings this way the inside door or the uh, metal door swings the opposite direction but they can open the door and be able to come around this corner fairly easy with four foot wide be able to turn this corner so this deck may have to come out I might have to come out right about at the wall right here but they can make this corner and come in and get me if they need to now the worst thing was when I was uh, on the unit was to respond to a really serious call because most of those patients inevitably seem like 90 percent of the time would be down a very narrow hallway that the stretcher wouldn't fit down in the very back bedroom back in there it seemed like those were the worst calls but if they need to come in there and get me in a hurry they could bring the stretcher around and come in uh, but used to you know we would if it was really serious just throw them on a backboard get them out put the backboard and all on the stretcher and take off but uh, yeah so I'm just trying to plan for that in the future plus you know I need a, another way I need a way of egress basically if something was to happen so uh, thank goodness the windows are low enough to the ground if I had to bail out a window I could do that but I need to go ahead and get this this is another project that's coming up that I need to get accomplished but you know that's the hardest part getting everything set up right uh, it just seems like I don't hardly get one project completed and then I need something else and I get started on that project like the workshop down there and of course you know we got a new sawmill because we wanted to right not because we had to but we were waiting for that to come in and then trying to get the workshop finished to where I had a place to put the sawmill once it got here and then not knowing anything about uh, a sawmill like that and all the fine tuning you know took me a while to get that all dialed in and then uh, all the parts finally came in for the solar system here and then having to get busy and put that together and, and this you know most people don't even have one of these they would run it straight to the cabin or you know some garage or, or wherever but like you know we had said in previous videos we figured that it would be a better choice to put the equipment here because we are only 50 to 75 feet actually from each building now it might look like it's farther apart on camera than what it really is 
but I am probably 60 feet from the outhouse, sitting from right here. I'm only probably 35 feet from the cabin, uh, about 50, 60 feet from the workshop down there. We are right at 60 feet, 55 feet I think it was, from the solar arrays sitting down there. Uh, of course, the one in the rear is uh, another nine feet back from that. But, you know, things uh, in proximity, they're, they're closer than what they might appear. But this seemed like the best choice. That way I didn't have a long DC run with the loss of current. I didn't have a long AC run with any loss of current and it was easy to distribute to each area. That way I didn't really have to cross anything to get back to somewhere where I might need to send the power to. So that is the reason that we took the time out to build this little structure right here. But, you know, I've had to take the time to try to build to where I can seal it off where bugs don't get in there to mess with the electronics, you know. But, uh, yeah, I think that this hut is going to uh, it's certainly got a lot of comments, let me tell you that. But I think that this is going to serve the needs for the electronic equipment and, like I said, be able to distribute whatever the needs are for the homestead. And you know, some folks may look at this channel and say, why doesn't he do anything? All he does is sit there and talk. Well, that's because <laughs> I've got a lot of comments recently, you know, uh, too much talk, need more work. Well, that's because you've landed on the wrong channel. This is a behind the scenes channel with information that's going on up here at the outpost. And it's also where I share maybe some prices and things like that of equipment that, you know, we've been using. What I will try to do at the very end of this project right here is to give you a grand total of what we spent. Uh, but so far, uh, I think that we're probably in the neighborhood of about $7,500. But don't take that to the bank because I need to go through the figures first. But it's still cheaper than what the power company wanted $10,000 to bring power up here. Then I would have to pay them, what, $150 or $200 every month from now on to use that. Okay, just based on what average, you know, electrical prices might be. They might even be more now. I don't know because I haven't had power for five years. <laughs> All I've had is those batteries in there it's expensive you know so I thought you know I will save that money I will invest it in solar and then hopefully I won't have that extra monthly payment that I would have to make now things will break and go bad with this solar system and I'll have to replace them that's where I will get the money in the savings that I would have every month but you're looking at 24 just say $2,500 a year let's say just round it off that's a lot of money, so that will go a long way towards any kind of equipment that might break down that I need to repurchase, right? If you were on the electric grid and something went bad in the house, you would have to replace that, right? So the same thing exists on this end as well. The only thing is, is I can take my savings. Now, you know, it didn't used to be that way. They would come and hook you up and they would put one pole. But now if they required a second one, you had to pay for that, but they don't do that anymore. It's 100% construction charge from their line hanging over the driveway down there, going in any direction. And since there's no pole, in order to get power, they have to set a pole there where you have to pay for that too. You have to pay for, you know, everything. So, like I said, I just figured that with the, that cost involved there, plus what it would cost me monthly, that I would save money. Uh, even if I had to replace something that might break because you're looking at like I said twenty five hundred dollars a year let's say that most of this I think has like a ten year shelf life and more on it so in ten years you're looking at what twenty two five twenty two thousand dollars twenty two thousand five hundred dollars that I could save is that right yeah uh, in ten years time I could buy several of these outfits that I put in here. So I believe that that was the way to go. Anyway, friends, I just wanted to share with you what was going on up here. This is the project that I'm getting ready to get started on. Since it stopped raining and it's starting to dry up a little bit, I may go ahead and get started in here. Anyway, thanks so much for stopping by. We certainly do appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.